Hey gang, today we are going to be looking at production and considerations you should have when making decisions within production. Let me minimize this here. I don't know if you can even see that. Okay, so moving on. In production, you have three primary decisions to make. Those include your production schedule, buying and selling capacity, and buying or selling automation. We're going to begin with your production schedule. So the question is, how much should you produce? How many sensors should you produce annually? The answer is, you should produce as many sensors as you can sell. Production is a very important. Accurately forecasting your sales and producing to that forecast, in my opinion, is the second most important factor to success within the simulation. The first being is producing sensors that consumers want, aligning your sensors with consumer specifications. Why is producing to your forecast and having an accurate forecast important? If you produce too much, you pay for the inputs, the raw materials, you pay for your workers to convert them into sensors, and then those sensors are idle. You aren't generating any re uh, revenue because they aren't sold. And then you are penalized by the simulation with an inventory carrying cost. When we look at this team's production, and this is not a student operated team, we can see that this team vastly overproduced. I'm looking at inventory on hand. For the FAST product, they have 1.5 million sensors on hand. This indicates that they produced way too many sensors the previous round, and because they didn't sell them, they're available this round. It's an issue in that the forecast for this round is only 282 units. They would need to produce zero sensors this round and many rounds going forward unless they increased the demand for their products. So not only are you hurt in the round where you overproduce because you don't sell those sensors, but you're hurt in rounds going forward because you're not utilizing your capacity. So how should you produce? Your production, or sorry, your unit sales forecast is based on your marketing forecast. In the event that you don't create your forecast, the benchmark prediction becomes your forecast. And as we talked about within the marketing function, your benchmark prediction is not a good estimate of demand. It doesn't take into consideration what competitors' products are. It only estimates sales based on standardized, mediocre sensors. Therefore, as indicated here, it is useless for forecasting. So go through and accurately forecast your sales. Once you forecast your cells this number, and we'll say we put 500 here, just as an example, and go back to production. That 500 units then becomes our unit cells forecast, and we can produce to that. In the event that you overproduced and you have more inventory on hand than demand, you need to produce zero this year. You need to get rid of that inventory on hand prior to beginning to sell or manufacture new sensors. Let's consider an example where our forecast exceeds our inventory on hand, which is the scenario you want to be in. We want to produce to that unit sales forecast. In this case, we have 228 units on hand. So we would produce 
1,623. I did that calculation in, in my head, so it could very well be wrong. But this number plus this number would equal this number if I did the calculations correctly. However, we don't utilize our production schedule in that calculation. We're going to use our production after adjustments because we don't produce as many sensors as we intend. And we can look at the production after adjustment to see why. We may not have the capacity to produce that. That's not the case here. We may not have enough workers to produce our full production schedule, or our suppliers may not provide us the inputs for production. And with the inputs, we cannot manufacture the sensors. And that's based on our accounts payable lag that was discussed under finance. And then also, if you made a revision to a product or introducing a new product, rather, you won't be able to produce that sensor for the full year. So let's say you're introducing a sensor and it doesn't come out until the sixth month, you'll only be able to produce at roughly half your capacity because those six months you're producing none because the sensor wasn't ready. So to get our correct production schedule, we want this number, our production after adjustment, plus our inventory on hand to match or equal our unit sales forecast. The unit sales forecast is critically important here. You need to develop a methodology to accurately forecast your sales and then produce to that number. And again, in the event that you have too much inventory on hand and that inventory on hand exceeds your unit sales forecast, then produce nothing because you need to be, begin to sell that inventory on hand before you produce more. Otherwise, you're going to build up excess inventory on hand. The next decision within the production function is buying and selling capacity. In some cases, you may have a product that isn't selling well, and you want to sell off some of that capacity. You want to operate at between 100 and 180% capacity and that that measures your capacity utilization so if we're looking at our first shift capacity we have 1.8 million units we can operate a second shift and produce up to 3.6 million so we would want to produce at least our first shift capacity which would be 100 percent capacity utilization and up to 80 percent of our second shift If you have a product that isn't selling well and you have way too much capacity, then you may wish to sell it off. You're being evaluated on your capacity utilization, and if you aren't using it, you wanna sell off those assets to free up cash and invest them in profitable, invest that cash in profitable opportunities. Before making the decision to sell off capacity, I would consider whether you're going to use that capacity in subsequent rounds because the market is growing and are, are you going to capitalize on that growing demand are you going to revise your products to make it more attractive in coming rounds and need that capacity because when you sell off capacity you do so at the salvage value if you were to purchase more capacity you're doing so at the retail value at some point you're likely going to need to build capacity also whether it is for an existing product to meet the growing demand or whether it's for a new product that you are creating it's important to note that building capacity takes one year so let's say i am increasing this product by 400 units because it's attractive in the market and selling well that additional 400 units of capacity which is 400 units for one ship. So an increase of 400 would actually be an increase of 800 because you have the first shift of 400 and second shift of 400 as well. Won't be available until the next round. This is important when you are creating a new product. 
you want to initiate the construction of capacity a year before your product reaches the market. Otherwise, you're going to have a new product that you can't manufacture because you don't have capacity. So always build capacity a year before your new product reaches the market. The third decision that we're going to discuss on production is automation. Automation has some advantages. What are those advantages? It can substantially reduce your cost of production because it reduces your labor cost. Indeed, each one unit increase in automation reduces your labor needs by 10%. You can have an automation rating between one and 10. So going from a one to a 10 would reduce your labor needs and subsequent costs by around 90%. So that's the advantage of automation. There are some disadvantages we should consider as well. First, it's very expensive. Automation is expensive. Second, it increases the time to revise your sensors. So you know, as we talked about, consumer specifications are changing over time. Consumers have more exacting specifications. They're expecting higher performing sensors. They're expecting smaller sensors. So for your sensors to remain viable, you have to revise them. When you're sensor production line is highly automated, that revision takes more time. And R&D costs are based on the time it takes. So if you were constantly revising the sensor, let's say you had a sensor in the high-end market where consumers you know, highly value the ideal spot and highly value a sensor with a perceived age of zero, you're probably going to need a to make a lot of revisions to that sensor. Maybe you wouldn't want to heavily automate a sensor that you want to constantly revise for the high-end segment. Whereas if you have a high-end sensor today, but you want to allow that sensor to drift back to the low-end segment, first to the traditional segment, then to the low-end segment, maybe automation makes sense because you aren't constantly revising that sensor, you're able to amortize the cost of automation across the traditional segment, across the low end segments, and reduce your cost. I'm not telling you, you shouldn't invest in automation if you're competing in the high end segment. I'm not telling you that it, you should invest in automation if you're allowing a sensor to drift back across segments. I'm just providing considerations when making the decision. Ultimately, automation is a strategic decision that should be made amongst the members in your group. Additionally, there are TQM initiatives that impact R&D times and things of that nature. So you can make decisions, strategic decisions, across functions, or decision areas within the simulation that interact with one another. That's all for today. Good luck on your decisions.